Hello, my name is Andrew. Welcome to my kitchen. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about cheeseburgers. Specifically, ones with thin patties versus ones with thick patties. And I'm making this distinction because Adam, who's the producer behind the camera, and I often talk about cheeseburgers. And a lot of this conversation happens in producing the show Worth It, where we've covered burgers a number of times. When making the double cheeseburger episode, we noticed this sudden rise in the popularity of thin smash patty style burgers, and how we weren't seeing as many new restaurants focusing on the thick pub style or steakhouse style burger that had been really popular in years prior. And just because one becomes more popular doesn't make the other obsolete or better than the other. So we wanted to explore the virtues of both styles. So today we'll be talking through two at-home burger recipes, one with a thick patty and one with a thin patty, and discussing what makes each one great. Let's start with thin patty burgers. For the thin patty burger, we made a slider with just a few inexpensive ingredients. First, we slice up some white onion pretty thinly. For the bread, we're using Hawaiian rolls, which are very sweet and very soft. We have two rolls still stuck together from the packaging, and we slice that in half to make one oblong bun. We're just using regular ground beef that is an 80-20, 80% lean beef and 20% fat mixture. You want a good amount of fat so you don't end up with a dry, flavorless burger. This is an eighth of a pound, which is about 55 grams. It can be great to grind your own meat, but we can cover that more a little bit later. For now, we're just using standard stuff from the grocery store. A really popular technique for making thin patty burgers is to smash them, making it a smash burger. When done right, like this one from Burgers Never Say Die, which was featured in the double cheeseburger worth it episode, they're great, but really doing them well at home can be difficult. You need the right tools, and if you're using a spatula, the edges of the pan can get in the way. It can also be tough to apply enough force and smash the patty down quickly, which is what gets you that special craggly crust. Restaurants often have specialized tools that they use just for this process. So when cooking at home, you can flatten the meat out prior to cooking, like for example, by using some wax paper and your hands. Since the patty is so thin, you should really only need to salt and pepper one side. We're using cast iron here because it retains heat very well, which is good for getting that nice crust. So we've got the pan preheated, some butter goes in, and we put sliced onions in that butter to get a little bit of caramelization on them. And then putting on the patty. It doesn't take very long to cook, maybe only a minute or so. So once it's flipped, we add the cheese. We're using American cheese because it melts very well and very quickly. If we were using a different cheese that had a longer time to melt, the patty might overcook by the time the cheese is adequately melted. Then you have those buns. You can see Adam kind of mop up some of the fat from the burger to help toast them up. Adding water and covering helps to melt the cheese faster and steams the bun, which usually takes only about 30 seconds or so. You can then scoop the onions on top of the melted cheese and pull it off all as one thing. And that's all there is to it. It's really just four ingredients plus the salt, pepper, and butter. You could add pickles or mustard if that's your preference, but it doesn't even really need ketchup since the onions and the bun are inherently sweet. And considering what you usually have access to at home, I think this makes a great option for making something really delicious out of not a lot of stuff. Next up is the thick patty. For the bread, we wouldn't use our Hawaiian rolls since they're so soft, they wouldn't really hold up to the weight of the thicker patty. Even many grocery store buns, like this potato one, are potentially too soft for this. With thick burgers, it's great to use a more sturdy bun, like a brioche or a pretzel bun. For cheese, we're using cheddar, and we're using a thick slice of it. Because the patty is gonna take longer to cook, we have the opportunity to use a cheese that'll take a longer time to melt and time out with the burger nicely. This is also a great opportunity to showcase a cheese that has more flavor of its own. So a really nice sharp cheddar works great in this situation. We're doing onions on this burger, but as opposed to the slider, we're using a thick slice of red onion. This is going on raw for some crunch and to offer the sharpness of that onion flavor to cut through all of the meat and cheese. We're also gonna make our own sauce for this burger, which will help balance out all of the extra bread and meat. We're making sort of a standard burger sauce here. It's mainly ketchup, mayo, except we're gonna take the extra step to make mayonnaise from scratch. Start with a clove of garlic or two. This one's pretty big, so it's just gonna be the one. Next, some pickles, and we're cutting up whole pickles here because 
Usually the relish that you might add is very sweet. And since we're adding ketchup to the sauce, I don't think it needs the additional sweetness of that relish. Plus you can control the size of the chunks and leave them a little bit bigger if that's your preference. I think it makes for a more interesting texture. For the mayonnaise, we have a large bowl with one egg yolk, the garlic we minced, and a bit of whatever mustard you want, as well as some lemon juice. But just add a little bit because we're gonna add more later. You start by whisking this and adding a little bit of olive oil, just a touch at a time. And we're going really slowly to make sure to not add too much as this would break the emulsion. We start with olive oil for flavor, but then after a bit switch to a more neutral oil, like this vegetable oil. We keep going little by little and making sure the oil is fluffy and incorporated before adding more. This is a step that can definitely go wrong if you add too much oil too quickly. You'll know it's gone wrong if the emulsion breaks, if it's like chunky and gross, or if it stays thin and never truly thickens into that mayonnaise consistency. I also kind of have a theory. I know that mayonnaise is a very divisive ingredient. If most people who thought they didn't like mayonnaise made it from scratch for themselves, they wouldn't find it as gross. I think it's delicious. It's a savory condiment. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> now we can add some lemon juice, which will enhance the flavor. It can also help thin it out. And you can even add a touch of water if it's still too thick and you don't want to add any more lemon. At this point, you can salt to taste or stop right here. You just have a very nice garlic mayo. Making a homemade mayo with garlic can be a real game changer for anywhere that you might typically apply mayonnaise. Like even some basic potato wedges with an excellent homemade mayo is incredible. Or Adam, I know, loves it in making a homemade BLT. And of course, we're using this mayo for our burger sauce, so in go those pickles and some ketchup. And you can adjust these proportions by feel. This is about a tablespoon of ketchup, which is going to add some sweetness, some umami, and that pink hue. Also, making the sauce in advance and keeping it in the fridge is a great idea because as it sits, the flavor will develop and be better and better. So to us, the main reason to have a thick patty is to get an excellent crust on the outside while maintaining a medium rare on the inside so you have the amazing texture and flavor of that high quality beef. And for a medium rare center, we really want good high quality ground beef. This is freshly ground stuff from a local butcher that specializes in Australian Wagyu and dry aged steaks, but you can always grind your own as well. To do this, you'd buy some chunks of beef, Chuck Works. From this tasty video, it's a mixture of chuck, sirloin, and short rib. You'd cut it into small cubes, put that in the freezer for about 20 minutes to get it cold and firm. You can also keep the grinder components in the freezer prior to grinding so that everything stays as cold as possible. And this helps the meat grind properly and not turn you know, into a paste. We learned this trick for shaping and weighing the burgers from when we filmed at Gramercy Tavern for their off-menu burger. We think it looks nice because it gives it a very uniform shape straight edges and sides. But if you didn't want to go to this trouble, you could also just form it by hand. We're toasting the buns with some butter before cooking the burger so that they're ready once the burger is done. We put the sauce on just the top bun. Some people are really intense about putting something under the patty to protect the bottom bun from getting soggy. But if you're gonna eat it straight away, it shouldn't be an issue. We wanted medium rare for the patty, so about three or four minutes and then a flip. Then we add the cheese and we're doing a bit of water and covering it to again, help melt the cheese. Going another three or four minutes on this side, aiming for that medium rare. Our toppings here are definitely not the definitive version of a thick patty burger, but with such a large burger, it can get unwieldy to add too much. Generally speaking, with a thick patty, there's more opportunity to explore different topping combinations, like this chili cheeseburger we had at Ototo or you could do the classic blue cheese, onions, and arugula. You could add something green if you like, or some tomatoes if they're great and in season. Our friend Keanu, who is in our holiday special of Worth It, and the founder of Giacconi Studios has this awesome tomato jam that's perfect on burgers. A fried egg on top could be great. So, thick patties and thin patty burgers. Both are great and both offer quite different things, but as long as you're aiming for the things that make each one great, you should be good.
If you're a longtime viewer of our content, you may have noticed that an older version of this video was previously uploaded to BuzzFeed Video. That video was sort of a precursor to the formulation of this whole channel, and we wanted to offer this video again uh, with fresh eyes and more of a sort of director's cut, if you will, for our audience here and now, in case you were wondering. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching.